row. Good morning, Andrew. I don't like to call on my neighbors at this unearthly hour, but something urgent has come up which affects all of us. Won't you sit down? Do you know who's had the gall to rent the house next door? Steve Hogan. Well, yes, I knew Steve was coming back, but... You knew? Well, why in the world didn't you tell the rest of us? I thought everyone knew he was getting out of prison, and... Certainly we all knew he was getting out, but you wouldn't think he'd come back here where people know him for the no-good bum he is. But, Mr. Rowe, a man can change. He, he's paid his debt. Ah, uh, men like Steve Hogan don't change. And besides, we don't want any ex-convicts in this neighborhood. Now, the thing for us to do is to get him out of here before he ever comes in. If we can do that in a peaceful, orderly fashion, then I'm all for it. But if we can't, then drastic measures must be taken. But, Mr. Rowe... Look, Andrew, I know that fighting anything goes against the grain with you. But we all have to do our share in this. I came over here because of the part your preacher had in this. He's the only real support Steve has here. But Dr. Goodrich... Of course, the Reverend Goodrich has a job to do with saints and sinners alike. But he doesn't have to thrust them on us. Well, he doesn't mean... Go talk to him. Tell him just that. Well, I'd do it, but it'll carry more weight coming from a member of his own church. Well, maybe so, but why don't you do it? No, he'd only start trying to get me to go to church. He's tried to see me a couple of times, but I avoided him. I'll make the rounds of the neighborhood. We might use a petition. I don't know just yet. I'll get in touch with you later. But, Mr. Rowe... Andrew, what's Mr. Rowe so riled up about? Jenny, I've made a big mistake. I got so interested in hearing the pastor talk about Steve Hogan that I felt I just had to help, too. But instead of helping, I've got Steve into a regular hornet's nest. You meant well, Andrew. You just didn't reckon with Mr. Rowe. I guess I sort of forgot about him. But I felt if Steve were close by, I could help him by being neighborly and... I guess Mr. Rowe will soon put a stop to that. Well, he's not even going to let him move in. Does he know you rented the house for Steve? No, I guess he'd have torn me limb from limb if he had. Jenny, I'd better go see the pastor. We've got to find some place for Steve to go. Will you call the store? Tell them something's come up and I won't be in today. Well, it sounds like our real problem's Mr. Rowe. I tried to see him, but couldn't. Mr. Rowe said he'd been avoiding you. I guess he doesn't have much use for preachers. That's what I discovered. But what about trying to see him again, Andrew? It wouldn't do any good. I can't get to first base. I guess you suspected all along he'd give us trouble. Well, I wasn't trying to see him about this. I wanted to see the three men whom Steve had harmed most. You know, he was guilty when they sent him away. And I thought it important that these men know about the change that's taken place in him. Well, how did the other two feel? Oh, they were a little skeptical at first, naturally, but both of them agreed to give him a chance to prove himself. Well, that's sort of the way I expected everybody to act. But by the time Roe gets through, they'll all be standing on their front porches with pitchforks. Very persuasive man, huh? Yes, he is. Doesn't give you a chance to get a word in edgewise. I took the day off, but I doubt that I can find another place for Steve. Wait a minute, Andrew. What about the neighbors? What about talking to them directly? Explain to them that if we believe in God, we believe that God can change people. And as Christians, we ought to be willing to help a man who's trying sincerely to straighten out his life. Well, I'd never be able to do it. But I thought about getting you to see them. I think you could talk to the neighbors into letting Steve move in. But you couldn't be there all the time talking to them, and that's what Roe would be doing. But you'd be there, Andrew. Yes, but I'm no match for Roe. Sometimes it's amazing what we are a match for when we're working on God's side. He doesn't just leave us alone. I'm afraid it's asking God to do too much where I'm concerned. About the house... Andrew, you don't really think you're too much for God. About the house... Before I knew you'd found him one near you, I'd located one in another section of the city. I noticed in the morning paper that it's still vacant. Oh, well, that's taken care of then. Of course, 
We don't know that any other neighborhood will react differently. No, we don't. I'm sorry I made such a mess of things. Andrew, don't worry. When we've done the best that we can, that's all that can be expected or asked of us. If this fails, we'll work out something else. Well, maybe so. Goodbye. Goodbye, Andrew. Didn't take you long to find another house. Didn't have to. Pastor already had one lined up. I guess he thought I'd be a failure. Now, Andrew, don't go talking that way. Mr. Rowe is a hard man to reckon with. He's got the neighborhood excited already. Carrie called a few minutes ago, and to hear her tell it, it's good riddance. Now, don't you go falling in with them. Steve's a fine man, and he deserves a chance to prove himself. I'm only saying what they said. Eula had told her there was no telling who he'd made friends with at the prison. No telling who'd be calling on them sooner or later. That sounds like something she'd make up herself. And that's the trouble. There'll be the Carries and the Eulas in this other neighborhood. And they'll never stop to think that God can change a man. Never try to help. They'll just tear him apart. Andrew, I've never seen you so riled up before. It's not the neighbor's fault. Well, whose fault is it? Mine? Of course not. You were doing your best to help. I haven't done my best until I straighten out my position with Mr. Rowe. Andrew, you're no match for Mr. Rowe. How do you know I'm not? This isn't just my business. It's God's business. Andrew, where are you going? I'm going to see Rowe. That's where I'm going. Andrew. Come in. Mr. Rowe? Oh, it's you, Andrew. I would have brought this petition over when it was ready, but uh, since you're here, just sit down and you can be the first to sign it. I'm not signing that petition or any other. What? I made the arrangements for Steve to rent this house, and I'm going to see to it that he gets a chance to move in. You what? Look, Mr. Rowe, Steve is more than an ex-convict. He's a child of God, and as such, I think he's worth saving. Oh, that. So you did go see the preacher? Yes, I did. And we decided that it would be best for Steve to live someplace else. Now, that's smart, Andrew. Talking with a man's one thing, and living with him is another. That isn't the reason we changed our minds, Mr. Rowe. We thought you'd be too big a stumbling block for Steve. You know very well I'm not going to put up with such as him, but you've got me confused. Which way have you made up your mind? Mr. Rowe, Dr. Goodrich and I are not thrusting an ex-convict upon this neighborhood. We're giving you a chance to help a man who's earnestly trying to make up for his mistakes and live a good life. Andrew, I know you mean well by this, but you can't change a man like Steve Hogan. No, I probably couldn't. But you see, Mr. Rowe, I'm a Christian, and I know that God can and does change men like Steve Hogan all the time. He changes men like you, too, who won't forget and forgive. That's why I'm here. Now, wait a minute. Don't go trying to convert me. We were talking about Steve Hogan. We were talking about the way you're treating Steve Hogan. Well, now, I don't want to be hard, Andrew, but you've got to be realistic about these things. Where people are concerned, we've got to have faith. Faith in what, what an ex-convict can become with God's help. You really believe that, don't you? Yes, I do, Mr. Rowe. I'm trying to be a Christian, and to do that means I have to help folks who've lost their way. You've taken on a mighty discouraging job. You don't know people. I'm learning every day about people and about God. You'd be surprised what God can do for you and through you if you give him the chance. I know. I'm going to tell you something, Andrew. I didn't know you had it at you. I respect your feelings and all this, but I can't welcome Steve Hogan back with open arms. I'm not asking you to. All I want is for you to leave him alone. Give him a chance to prove himself. Then you're really moving him in, Andrew. Not just me, Mr. Rowe. We're all moving him in. Goodbye, Mr. O. Goodbye, Andrew. Everything all 
right, Andrew? Oh, yes, Jenny. Hello, Dr. Goodrich. This is Andrew McKinley. Have you called about the house? I got to thinking after I left you and decided to go over and talk to Mr. Rowe. I believe he's changed his mind about Steve's living here. Yes, I think everything will work out fine. I'm going out now to talk to the rest of the neighbors. Goodbye. Goodbye, Andrew, and God bless you. No telling what this is going to mean to Steve Hogan. And to Mr. Rowe. But most of all, Andrew, what it means to you. You know, the greatest discovery any one of us ever makes is what God can do through us when we give him a chance. When we work with him, he gives us power equal to any occasion, any crisis, any job. The trouble is, so many of us are too timid, afraid to try. But when we're willing to make the venture to go out on a limb for a great principle, a great ideal for the Christian faith, we discover that it's always true. He gives us power, can even work miracles through us. I doubt if Andrew ever thought of himself as being a witness for his faith. But that's exactly what he was, and it's what every one of us can be. I have a little booklet here on what it is to witness. It's written very directly, answers when, how, where, and what. I think you'd find it both interesting and helpful, and I'd like to send you a copy. Take a card or a letter and address it to me, the pastor, in care of this station. And on the other side of it, write the word witness at the top. And then your name, your address, your city and state. Be sure to write the word witness at the top of the card. And then address it to me, the pastor, in care of this station. And I'll put your copy of witnessing in the mail to you immediately, free and postpaid. One of my favorite verses in the Bible you might call it a promise, is this one. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God.